I'm fishing in pool 15. It's early May and it's been a long cold winter in Sweden. The trees has yet no leaves. Everything is late and so is the silver salmon, which normally starts to run from the Baltic in late April. This year I got a season permit, so I planned two visits to Murrum in May with one single mission in mind, to catch a silver salmon, the most soaked after fish for fly fishermen in Scandinavian waters. But there is no sign of the big strong silver torpedo. It could have been worth though. Due to the weather conditions and low temperature in the water, there is still plenty of sea trout and overwinter salmon in the river. And catching sea trout is good fun while waiting for the big boys to enter the arena. I am at Laxrakan in Vittskövle and the area under the overhanging tree is a real hot spot. Fish on! It's a nice sea trout. A little splishing and splashing. And back it goes. A nice strike, but not a big fish. The fight is soon over. This is the same pool, just 20 minutes later. This time it's a bigger fish, but it sure ain't no silver salmon. Yet another decent sea trout. This is what I call a takeoff. I'm fishing at Reda Stugan when a sea trout strike the fly. My first attempt of the year of catching a silver salmon is coming to an end. I haven't seen any and no silver salmon has been caught during the week. And everyone is wondering, when will it come? Despite the fact that I didn't succeed in my quest for a silver salmon, I was still rather satisfied. And I also knew, of course, that I'll be back soon, and surely there must be lots of salmon in the river in late May. I'm back in Murm again, and the conditions is even worse than last time. Very low water, no fish in the river that will bite, and still no sign of the silver salmon. I'm fishing at the beautiful Rosendala, the most mythical place in the whole Murren River. Around the stone in the middle, thousands of salmon have been caught through the years, and it's always a thrill fishing here. And then suddenly, something strikes the fly. Or was it? I'm not sure, but I soon realized that it's a fish. But which sort? It turned out to be a small pike acting like a salmon. 
This really is a rare catch at this spot, but I still can't say I'm happy about it. I catch three pikes during my second visit to Murray. Not what I wanted. The dream of the silver salmon is slowly fading away. And then, on the same day I was leaving, the water flow unexpectedly rise from 10 to 25 cubic meters. Nobody could figure out why, because it's dry as a desert. But maybe it's the result of having the control of the river placed over a thousand kilometers away. Nevertheless, this was a signal to the silver salmon to run and that very evening the locals could see them coming, almost like dolphins in the sea pools. Knowing this, I decided to go back to Murren within a fortnight. It's my third visit to Murren this season, and the river is very different compared to last time. It's full of silver salmon, running for the best spawning locations. A lot of fish, yes, but not at all easy to catch. It's June, and the water temperature is now close to 20 degrees Celsius, and that is bad news fishing for salmon. The water flow is still around 18 cubic meters, which is okay, even though one always wanted it to be a little more. But I soon hook a fish. Not a big one, but definitely not a pike. I could see some silver. Maybe it's a sea trout or a small salmon. Nope, neither of it. It's an eyed and nothing to celebrate. Back it goes. I'm beginning to run out of time and still I haven't catch one of the elusive silver salmon. But then something strikes the fly. I could feel the power, but just for a fragment of a second. The big silver salmon is off the hook before it shows itself in a mighty jump high over the water surface. That was so close, but yet so endlessly far away. I'm fishing the streams. It's a pool full with difficulties and of course opportunities. If a fish strikes the fly here, you don't want it to go downstream. Not at any cost. To the left is an old mill race and is blocked with a tree trunk across. In the middle there are two islands and you don't want the salmon to go down to the right side and certainly not between the islands. And upstream there's a strong current to the right and a lot of big stones in the water. In other words, it's a tricky pool to land a silver salmon in. And then, fish on! No doubt it's a silver salmon. I can really feel the power. This is the moment I've been longing for, for almost a year. Maybe the dream for the quest for the silver salmon after all is about to come true. The salmon is swimming upstream to the right. It's coming to watch me. And now it decides to go for the mill race. I keep more pressure on the reel than I've ever done before. Holding, holding, let go a little, and then hold, hold again, and so on. And all the time I force myself to keep the rod as straight up as possible so it can flex and tire the fish, trusting the fishing gear and hoping the hooks has got a firm grip. The salmon changed direction towards the island in the middle. No real danger this time though. It was never close to the wrong side.
I decided to change my position. The salmon immediately responded to the lack of pressure and headed for the mill race again. I believe that this moment decided the outcome of the fight. If I hadn't been breaking the reel as hard as I did and holding the rod up, the silver salmon would probably have escaped in the distance. The fight is soon coming to an end. I can still lose the salmon of course, but now it's all up to me. The silver salmon is swimming nicely towards me and I have no problem landing the fish. 8 kilo of pure silver. If I was happy, well... Let me put it this way, when I don't get excited over a catch like this, then I will quit fishing and do something else. I'm still shaking. <laughs>